Hello everyone, today we will compare Crossa with Node-RED. Throughout this video we will address several key differences, so let's go through them step by step. Let's start with the general architecture. Node-RED is designed as a single instance application, meaning that you have the configuration and execution runtime on the same host. Due to that, you can easily install and configure your flows on a local device, but it gets tricky if you want to replicate the flows that you have created once. Furthermore, it is based on Node.js. Crosser, on the other hand, was designed as a multi-instance application with clean separation between the Crosser Control Center, which is the central management and configuration application, and the Crosser node, which is the execution runtime. Thanks to this concept, you can control your flows in all nodes across the globe from one central interface, which makes it pretty easy to deploy existing flows into different environments. The solution is built on .NET Core, which provides a great performance advantage as well. When building flows to integrate different systems or applications, you need to have access to the relevant interfaces. Due to the fact that flows in Node-RED can only be created locally, the user must access the local UI. One of the key components of the Crosser Control Center is the so-called Flow Studio. With the Flow Studio, you can connect into distributed nodes, which usually run behind firewalls in your environment. This concept allows you to test and debug your flows from one central interface without the need to have access to the on-premise installation. Beside that, you can also test and debug your flows on cloud-based sandboxes. To give you an impression how easy this is, let's jump into the Flow Studio. I'm now logged in into the Crosser Control Center and what you see here is one flow that I've pre-configured and what this flow does, it consumes information from different on-prem systems and sends it to the Azure IoT Hub. Um, so just to give you an understanding, we are trying to connect into systems which are running on-prem behind the firewall. And of course, these systems are not exposed to the internet. So for example, we are connecting to an S7 PLC and we are connecting to an OPC UA server. These systems run on-prem and they will not be accessible from the internet. What I can do now, I can go to connect and then I get a list of my nodes which are running in my environment connected to my Crosser organization. So let's assume I want to test this flow on the node which is called Factory 1. I just click on the node and behind the scenes the node will now establish a connection to the Crosser Control Center which allows you to temporarily communicate with this node in a bidirectional way. Afterwards, I can click the Start Remote Session button and then the node will download all these modules, these configurations, validate everything on-prem and then executes the flow. If you then hover over these modules, you will find a debug icon on the top and left corner. And when you click on it, you can actually see the output of this module temporarily. So step by step, you can see how the data is being transformed into your goal format and afterwards sent out to your destination system. Once you've verified that everything works as expected, you can just stop the flow again. And then also the payload messages that you see temporarily in your browser will be deleted when you click clear. Let's assume you want to replicate the flow that we have just created to a different environment. In Node-RED, you would export the flow from one setup and import it to another. In case you want to update a flow, you will have to follow the same process. This has to be done manually one by one. With a large fleet of runtimes, this can end up in significant effort. 
Thanks to the deployment capabilities of the Crosser solution, you can deploy the same logic with just a few clicks into different nodes. In addition to that, our solution comes with built-in version control and mass update functionality. Besides that, you might want to tweak the flow configuration slightly according to your environment where you might find different IP addresses, for example. To realize that, you can parameterize your flow during deployment. How this is being done is pretty simple in our solution. Let's assume we want to deploy the flow which is called generic demo number one. We can expand the view and then we get a list of all the versions that have been created over time. Let's now assume that we want to deploy version number 35 to some nodes. We can see right away that the flow is currently not deployed to any nodes, so we can click on deployed nodes, go to deployments and we see that this list is empty, which means that this flow is not being deployed anywhere right now. But let's say we want to deploy it on a couple of nodes and let's say we want to do it on factory node 1, 2, 3 and 4. I could either select the nodes one by one, or I can use the search field to search for the nodes that I'm interested in and then select all of them. Once that is done, I just need to press deploy this version. And now we create so-called jobs at the Crosser Control Center. Jobs basically are instructions for nodes, what they should execute. And these nodes now get the instruction to download the flow, which is called generic demo number one in version number 35. The nodes have now downloaded the flow, the flow components, credentials, libraries, and so on and so forth, and are running this flow now uh, on prem. Same process if you want to remove the flows, then you go to deployments, select the nodes where you want to remove the flow and just click undeploy or you can also change versions from here right away. Once you have deployed your flow, you want to know in case something goes wrong, like connection to a database is down, data transformation failed or unexpected resource consumption. Compared to Node-RED, where you have access to local log files only, Crosser Control Center comes with a powerful monitoring and observation tool. When an event is generated by a flow, such as connection lost, failed execution, or exceeded message queues, the node will send this event to the Crosser Control Center. In addition to that, nodes send metrics for flows and the host process on a regular basis. As a result, you have the capability to understand the current state of all your nodes and flows from one centralized platform. You can even drill down into detailed events and use this to troubleshoot problems that might occur over time. The starting point for this is the monitoring overviews page. This page is designed in a way that on the first glance you get an indication about the status of your processes and hosts in the field. You see an overview on the left hand side of the flows uh, next to it, the nodes, and then you also see uh, message traffic uh, that is basically indicating how many messages uh, are going through your nodes uh, in a specific time period. Underneath, you have highlighted events and recent activities. On the next page, you can go to the flows and see a few flow details. So again, uh, some graphs on the top side indicating the status and then it's fairly easy for you to click on just, let's say I want to see the uh, error flows or warning flows, and it's fairly easy just to select those. The filter is being applied, and then you can click onto this event and get a list of events that have occurred on this flow over time. And here, as you see already, you can see a list of events and drill down into details. And then here, for example, you will see that the connection to the MQTT broker went down. Similar approach for the nodes. Uh, you have the possibility to first of all categorize nodes into production nodes or just testing nodes. So testing nodes will not uh, 
be treated uh, the same priority wise as the uh, regular nodes. But here you get a list of all your nodes and a status on just one view. For every tool that you use in a production environment, you eventually have to think which user should have permission to do what. Compared to the local UI usage in Node-RED, Crosser Control Center comes with a granular roles and permission concept. This concept allows you to create read-only users, users that can only access development nodes. This concept allows you to create read-only roles, roles that can only access development nodes, or roles that can use but not manage sensitive information like credentials and certificates. In combination with the flow sharing feature, you have all features in place to apply a tailored roles and permission concept specifically for your needs. You can even integrate with an external identity provider such as Azure Active Directory to utilize single sign-on and map ID groups with the roles that you have created in the Crosser Control Center. Roles and permissions are being managed in the organization settings. If you navigate to roles, you have two default roles, which is the cross standard user and the super user. These roles are there by default, but you can edit them and tailor them to your needs if wanted. Let's assume we add a new role and let's say we have a read only role. In that case, I would like to have the user to get access to all nodes so they can view nodes, create new nodes, maybe update them, test flows, delete nodes if wanted. And then on flows, I just want to have them the possibility to view and create new flows, but I just leave update and delete out of scope. So with that, the users will be able to see different parts of the solution. I could even think about uh, leaving out parameters completely. So this section of our solution will not be even seen by the user. As you can see, you have many, many possibilities that you can specify. You could also think about also assigning specific labels to roles. The concept here is the following in case a user only has access to the label factory then the user can only see the nodes that are, that are labeled with factory local solutions are often used to build data engineering pipelines and send data to storages so that ai models can be trained and executed on the cloud level but in some cases you have to bring the ai model back to the edge for example a huge amount of data is required for your analytics and you want to avoid sending all the raw data to the cloud. In case the latency between the analysis in the cloud and the returning of the result back to the edge is unacceptable, or if you have to run the AI model behind the firewall due to security restrictions. In Crosser, you can implement your trained AI model just as any other module. You can install additional Python libraries from within the Flow Studio and reference trained AI models from the resource library. Thanks to that, you have a seamless integration of your trained AI model and can use the full deployment and monitoring capability of the Crosser platform. How this is being done in the Flow Studio is illustrated using this flow. What we see here is basically a closed loop AI example where we fetch data from an OPC UA server. Afterwards, we create a time window over 20 seconds. We have different uh, possibilities here. Um, in this case, uh, we just uh, create a uh, sliding window based on a count of 20. And then the interesting part we have a Python bridge module which you can just drag and drop from the library into your uh, flow. Um, you can install additional libraries from this package to install section. Basically, we execute pip install in the background, so you can also reference your own repository if needed. And then uh, further down at the end, you have the code that is actually being executed. First of all, you import the additional Python packages and libraries. Uh, in this case, we reference where the module 
uh, is being located on the host system, which is actually being deployed from our solution as well. And then on every incoming message, we basically feed the trained AI model with the data from within the flow. And afterwards, we, turn, uh, we return results back onto the flow as a message. Um, the result of this AI model is then being fed back into the same machine. So this is basically illustrating in a closed loop AI use case. So what we do here, we basically just calculate simple predictions and send these predictions back to the same PLC. When bringing this solution into production, you also have to consider possible support and SLA options. In case things go really, really bad, you want to have someone on hand that can support you. Node Red has a great community with a lot of experienced people that are ready to help, but chances to get someone on the phone on demand might be quite low. A lot of people are contributing to the Node Red community with connectors which have the same purpose but might act differently, so it is not a given that help is just around the corner. With Crossa, you have full supported solution with different SLAs according to your needs. In addition to the enterprise-grade support, including interactive support sessions, you also have access to training material, webinars, and a broad knowledge base, including best practices and much more.